Thanks for staying with us. According to reports, 32 people were killed and 14 injured during an attack on travelers in Garabiu, in northern part of Plato State. The victims were in a convoy of five buses and were traveling from Bochi State to Ikare in Undo State, where they were attacked. The killing of 25 commuters Saturday morning along the Kuba Road community, a suburb of just the state capital, has received wide condemnation across the country. The aftermath of the Saturday killings had resulted in the imposition of 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, first in three council areas of the state, which include just north, just south, and then Vasa. Despite the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew imposed Saturday evening by the state government, some angry youths refused to obey the other. Instead, they took to the street Sunday morning blocking major roads within the city metropolis, again attacking innocent passers-by in reprisal to Saturday's attack. The state government, in order to avert a further escalation of the situation, quickly imposed a 24-hour curfew, restricting this to just not local government area where the activities of the irate youths pose a serious threat to them. So we have with us two guests in the studio, um, <laughs> Dr. Makut Simon Makam, who is the Director of Press and Public Affairs to the Governor of Plato State. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. And we also have Chinge Dodo, who is a former president, Irigwe Youth Movement, Plato State. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning, TVC. Yeah. Good morning, viewers. Good morning. So let us, let's start with Dr. Makut. Um, we know that the government have declared a state um, uh, curfew, a, a curfew for, 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 that, for the state right now. What's the update concerning arrests that have been made? And what's going on? What's the police saying? And where are we with the investigation as of this morning? Um, um, thank you very much. Uh, this is an opportunity to give an update. Uh, as of evening yesterday, the uh, security heads in Plateau State met with the governor to brief him on the developments uh, regarding the curfew, the arrest, and the search for those that were still missing. Um, as I said yesterday, uh, about 30 people or so were, have been arrested, while uh, 36 other people were recovered um, on hurt. Uh, some of them uh, were actually um, hidden by uh, people around the community uh, when they sought refuge and were kept until the security forces uh, could uh, reach them to get them. Uh, so, a uh, continuous uh, search for uh, perpetrators is ongoing. And um, uh, yesterday morning, uh, the tension was very high within uh, just north, and uh, a lot of um, confusion in the morning. And so, the governor had to, on the advice of the security heads, impose a 24 hour curfew on just north in order to um, prevent uh, escalation of the situation. Right. Uh, right. The commissioner of police uh, made mention um, in the evening yesterday that about seven people were killed um, uh, from the skirmishes of the morning. So okay. uh, as of now, just north is under 24-hour curfew, and then uh, just south and Basa uh, are still observing the dust-to-down uh, dust curfew. Right. Okay, let me come to Mr. Chinge Dodo. Um, as former president of the Irigwe Youth Movement in Plato State, reports have alleged that Irigwe youth were responsible for these killings. Could you give us an update on, on that? What exactly, is that true? And if it is, what exactly was their grouse that, that, that caused them to carry out these killings? Let me first and foremost condemn these atrocities from fellow human beings to fellow human beings, and to also say that it is very, very unfortunate, it is very, very embarrassing, it is quite astonishing for a security agency that is yet to carry out its own duty to come out to say clearly that a particular tribe is responsible for killings. Mm -hmm. Let me also inform our listeners and viewers that on Saturday morning, when we all assemble at Plateau Hospital, Plateau Hospital, by the way, is like three, four kilometers to Rukuba Road, venue of the incident. Irigwe people were mourning the death of their beloved ones and we were to give them a mass burial. Mm. On reaching the police headquarters along Jones, we came across a convoy of security personnel, that is personnel operation 7, who we are on their way to Rukuba Road to rescue or to be at the scene of this attack. Unfortunately, we were 
were stopped at a particular junction and we had asked to turn back and follow another route to our village called Miango, where the mass burial was to take place. And when we were doing the, the mass burial, we read a statement by the police accusing our people, a people who are mourning their be beloved ones, a people who are bereaved, a people that since 2017 has been under series of attack and yet no victims, no attacker has been arrested. And then we hear the police accusing us. This is most unfortunate to say the least. And people are made to believe that Iroquois people are responsible for this killing. May our viewers and listeners know that this is completely unprofessional by the police. Investigations are on. How are they able to know that this is a particular tribe is responsible for this killing? Unfortunately, as a people, we can say that more than 700 of our people have been killed in the last three years. At the moment, I was thinking that people should be calling it with people, sympathizing with them on, on, over the loss of their beloved ones, especially in the last two weeks, we have had about 74 of our people killed. What we should be expecting from government, from security agencies, are words of condolences, words of encouragement. Instead, the police that is meant to protect us is single-handedly telling the world that our people are responsible for this killing. Clearly, there are two issues here. The Uruguayans are saying that, listen, they are, this is being put on them. Mm. And they've been, they, many they've of their been families mourning. have been killed for years, and they've not seen response from the government thus far. However, when this clean happened, suddenly we've seen the response from the governor. But the governor is saying that he has put, imposed the curfew, the security apparatus in, is in place to ensure there's no reprisal attacks, and that they're on top of this. We'll continue to monitor this story, because the truth is that two wrongs can never make a right. At all.